Hi Year 3, um, it's that time of day again where I get to read you a story. Um, I hope you enjoyed yesterday's. Um, if you remember, we left Danny and his dad uh, plotting to steal Mr Hazel's pheasant. So I wonder how they got on today. I'm going to read you chapter 11 on this link. And then when you're ready, if you click on the next link, I'll read you chapter 12. Okay, uh, this chapter is called The Sleeping Beauty. So get yourself comfortable and get ready to listen. Let's go. Okay, five minutes later, I was lying on my bunk in my pajamas. My father came in and lit the oil lamp hanging from the ceiling. It was getting dark earlier now. All right, he said, what sort of story should we have tonight? Dad, I said, wait a minute. What is it? Can I ask you something? I've had a bit of an idea. Go on, he said. You know that bottle of sleeping pills Doc Spencer gave you when you came back from the hospital? I never used them. I don't like the things. Yeah, but is there any reason why those wouldn't work on a pheasant? My father shook his head sadly from side to side. Wait, I said. Oh, it's no use, Danny. No pheasant in the world is going to swallow those lousy red capsules. Surely you know that. You're forgetting the raisins, Dad. The raisins? What's that got to do with it? Now listen, I said. Please listen. We take a raisin, we soak it till it swells, then we make a tiny slit in one side of it with a razor blade. Then we hollow it out a little, then we open up one of your red capsules and pour all the powder into the raisin. Then we get a needle and thread and very carefully we sew up the slit. Out the corner of my eye, I saw my father's mouth slowly beginning to open. And there's Danny from his bunk bed with his father after telling him the start of his plan. Now, I said, we have a nice clean looking raisin chock full of sleeping pill powder and that ought to be enough to put any pheasant to sleep. Don't you think so? My father was staring at me with a look of such wonder in his eyes he might have been seeing a vision. Oh, my darling boy, he said softly. Oh, my sainted aunt, I do believe you've got it. Yes, I do, I do, I do. He was suddenly so choked up with excitement that for a few seconds he couldn't say any more. He came and sat on the edge of my bunk and there he stayed, nodding his head very slowly up and down. You really think it would work? I asked him. Oh, yes, he said. It'll work all right. With this method, we could prepare 200 raisins and all we'd have to do is scatter them around the feeding grounds at sunset and then walk away. Half an hour later, after it was dark and the keepers had all gone home, we would go back into the wood and the pheasants would be up in the trees by then, roosting. And the pills would be beginning to work and the pheasants would be starting to feel groggy. They'd be wobbling and trying to keep their balance and soon, Every pheasant that had eaten one single raisin would be toppled over unconscious and fall to the ground. Why, they'd be dropping out of the trees like apples. And all we'd have to do is walk around picking them up. Can I do it with you, Dad? And they'd never catch us either, my father said, not hearing me. We'd simply stroll through the woods, dropping a few raisins here and there as we went. And even if they were, even if they were watching, as they wouldn't notice anything, Dad, I said, raising my voice, you will let me come with you. Danny, my love, he said, laying a hand on my knee and gazing at me with eyes large and bright as two stars. If this thing works, it will revolutionise poaching. Yes, Dad, but can I come with you? Come with me, he said, floating out of his dream at last. But my dear boy, of course you can come with me. It's your idea. You must be there to see it happening. Now then, he cried, bouncing up off the bed. Where are those pills? The small bottle of red capsules was standing beside the sink. It had been there ever since my father returned from hospital. He fetched it and unscrewed the top and poured the capsules onto my blanket. Let's count them, he said. We counted them together. There were exactly 50. Oh, that's not enough, I said. We need 200 at least. Then I cried out, wait, hold it. There's no problem. He began carefully putting the capsules back into the bottle 
as he did, so he said. All we've got to do, Danny, is divide the powder from one capsule among four raisins. In other words, call to the dose. That way, we'd have enough to fill 200 raisins. But would a quarter of one of those pills be strong enough to put a pheasant to sleep, I said. Of course it would, my dear boy. Work it out for yourself. How much smaller is a pheasant than a man? Oh, many, many times smaller. There you are then. If, you put, if your pill is enough to put a fully grown man to sleep, you'd only need a tiny bit for one pheasant. What we're giving him will knock the old pheasant for a loop. He won't know what's hit him. But Dad, 200 raisins aren't going to get you 200 pheasants. Why not? Because the greediest birds are surely going to gobble up about 10 raisins each. Oh, you've got a point there, my father said. You certainly have. But somehow, I don't think it will happen that way. Now, if, I'm very, if, I'm, if I very carefully spread them over a wide area, don't worry about it, Daddy. I'm sure I can work it. And you promise I could come with you? Oh, absolutely, he said. And we should call this method the Sleeping Beauty. It will be a landmark in the history of poaching. I sat very still in my bunk, watching my father as he put each capsule back into the bottle. I could hardly believe what was happening, that we were really going to do it, and he and I alone were going to try and swipe practically the entire flock of Mr Victor Hazel's prized pheasants. Just thinking about it sent little shivers of electricity running all over my skin. Exciting, isn't it? My father said. Oh, I don't dare think about it, Dad. It makes me shiver all over. Me too, he said. But we must keep very calm from now on. We must make our plans very, very carefully. Today is Wednesday. The shooting party is next Saturday. Cripes, I said. That's in three days' time. When do you and I go to the wood and do the job? The night before, my father said. On the Friday. In that way, they won't discover that all the pheasants have disappeared until it's too late and the party has begun. Friday's the day after tomorrow. My goodness, Dad, we'll have to hurry if we're going to get 200 raisins ready before then. My father stood up and began pacing the floor of the caravan. Here's the plan of action, he said. Listen carefully. Tomorrow is Thursday. When I walk you to school, I shall go into Cooper's stores in the village and buy two packets of seedless raisins. And in the evening, we will put the raisins in to soak for the night. But that only gives us Friday to get ready 200 raisins, I said. Each one will have to be cut, open, filled with powder and sewed up again. And I'll be at school that day. No, you won't, my father said. You'll be suffering from a very nasty cold on Friday and I shall be forced to keep you home from school. Ha <laughs> ha, I said. We will not open the filling station at all on Friday, he went on. Instead, we will shut ourselves in here and prepare the raisins. We will easily get them done before uh, between us in one day. And that evening, off we'll go up to the, to the road towards the wood to do our job. Is that all clear? He, said, he was like a general announcing the plan of battle to his staff. All clear, I said. And Danny, not a whisper of this to any of your friends at school. Dad, you know I wouldn't. He kissed me goodnight and turned the oil lamp down low but it was a long time before I fell asleep. Okay, fantastic. That is the end of chapter 11. When you are ready, please click on, uh, click on the next link and I'll be back with the next chapter. Thank you very much. See you in a bit.